Okay, here we go, guys. Into game number four. Uh, Flu is Mongols and Jose is Persia. And they are up against Britons and Franks. Would be an interesting game because I think, again, they got the save advantage, but I'm not gonna say anything without looking at the map. So here we go. Uh, for some reason, Flu keeps getting a very forward goal <laughs> and very shitty wood lines. <laughs> He's got forward base, forward goal. His wood line's not very great. Uh, nothing special in his base. Back ball, back. Four sheep, deers there as well. And he's up against uh, Feno, who's Britons. Again, he's got forward goal, wood at the front. There's a wood line at the back, base on the side. Uh, then Malco, we have Malco who's playing as Franks. He has got a back goal, uh, forward berries, forward stone. A wood line at the back, but not a very ideal one. Any wood line with oasis is just not ideal in the long run. Jose has got really good wood line at the back. That's good. He's got back base. Again, forward goal from him. Two forward goals. And he is already scouting Melko. Oh, he missed that ball by just a couple of tiles. But is he going to find this ball? He is, has found the ball. He's going to lame it though. That's the question. No? Jose has decided not to lame the ball. Interesting. Flu is going forward now towards Fado. Um, I, I would like to see if he... If he was going to lame the ball, but he's going back to his base. Uh, I think he will push some deers. Yep, he's pushing the deers. Okay, A and Snana, Mongols are very strong in Arabia games in open map. They can, uh, because of their advantage uh, versus Hun, they can go up relatively faster than any other sip. So they can, flu can actually go up at around 10 minute mark or 9:30 mark and pump out three scouts and start reading Feno's base, his woodline, his base, and put him under early pressure. Feno, on the other hand, there's no point in going scouts as Britons uh, because you get advantage as archers. Uh, what I would imagine to see from Feno is a drush. Drush into flush. Uh, and then again, with Persia, you can easily make scouts. Uh, and once you hit feudal age, uh, the villager production becomes faster than other saves, so you can produce villagers faster. And Persia knights, yes, as my friend Romanian has said, Persian knights have bonus against archers, and it's a team bonus, so flu gets a bonus against archers as well. Uh, just a quick look. Yeah, knights. So Mongols are very, very strong save on an open map. So if you look at it, Flu's got already getting uh, Bloom and he's up to Feudal Age. He clicked up, 9.22. And Feno is nowhere near going up. Now he is, now he's, gonna, he's just clicking up. Yeah, he clicked up, 9.47. I um, think he's gonna go for Archers, yeah, because he's putting his villagers on gold. Mm, 
Melko is just pushing some deers, giving boost to his eco. Jose has started walling, but he hasn't completed. I think he's gonna make his barracks and stables on this side of the map and completely neglect the gold for now. Obviously, once he makes building stay this side, it's gonna be walled, so he can just force the action on the other side. I'm gonna stay on Flu's point of view for now and see what he's doing because I can. I would like to see a lot of aggression from him. He's making some militia. So man at arms, I'm assuming, and then archers from Flu. Man uh, Castle Age Manguta is another strong, my friend. Uh, it's uh, they're, they're very standard units. Unfortunately, for, for Manguta is to have a s significant attack uh, to do significant damage, you need to get the upgrades, and Manguta is require a lot of upgrades. Uh, it's not just the university. You need to get bloodlines. You need to get thumbbring and. And, and husbandry and then obviously blacksmith upgrades. So a lot of investment have to be put into the mango dice. The trash is into Feno's base. Oh, oh, that is a very quick wall. That is very quick. Can he wall around here? No, he didn't. He can potentially lose this villager, but I don't think he will. That's that's very good play by Blue. Oh, there's a hole here in the oasis. And he is Feno is sending a villager there now to wall that gap. Man at arms are up from flu. Now he can take this fight. Man at arms are so strong. And Fuel Age. This is really good play by a flu. I mean I don't think uh who, Fano was expecting these, I think he was expecting scouts, but these man at arms are oh, they are doing such a good job. Such a fine job. No no no, don't run into TC. That's good play, really good play. Blue is on one range at the moment and he's sending his archers forward now. Oh, there's a hole around here as well. Jose's got a few scouts and I think he's gonna go to Fena. now, he's, they're gonna double it. Yeah, it's always the, the oasis, that, that's the thing with oasis, I mean, it's not, it, ju it just doesn't mess it up your wood line, but it also leaves gaps for you to wall. Oh, that wolf! It's so annoying. Oh, the wolf has killed the man at home. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Feno is, sorry, Melko is going forward now with his scouts towards Jose's base. Jose is fully walled. Yeah, I don't see any visible holes in the wall. And Jose is raiding Melko at his base. This is very good. Can you pick up a villager though? I doubt he will. But that's that's good. That's good raiding. He has given Melko some idle time. Ah, oh, that is a huge wall actually. Melko is going to what? Flu. Can he snipe some villagers? I think Flu has seen that and he's reacting to it. Yes, that is very good. That is very good play. Marcos, uh, yes, the GB scouts going back to Feno's base. Uh, no fletching for either player, but Melko, sorry, sorry, I keep mixing the names. Feno has got more army than Flu. You, you, 
uh, with the scout rush, it's it's more about giving the idle time. So Dark Age is all about optimizing your resources and being as efficient as possible. And then Feudal Age, it's all about getting you know your boom right, and then obviously you, you don't aim to always kill the villagers but you aim to give them idle time just think about villagers with wood in their hand and not actually dropping them it's it's same thing as they're not working and looking at the resources now so jose is up and melko is he's gonna be up as well soon and slightly late Uh, Flu has decided to move away from Pano's face. He's going towards Melko. Mm, no bloodlines from either players. Franks don't get bloodlines. They're just chasing the scouts. Flu is going towards. Melko's goal. He's not gonna see them until the last minute. And these archers have got fledging. He can potentially kill a couple of villagers. He's got one. Uh, yeah, he can potentially kill that one as well. That's two. Good play, good play by Flu. Really good. And Jose is coming on the other side. And he has killed the Spearman. Oh, the really quick wall by. Really quick. Oh no, there's a hole there. Oh god. The hole in the wall in the oasis. But Jose has lost two scouts. He's managed to kill a villager. Can he kill the other one? That is really good play. It seems like the scout is stuck there. Oh, that is such a good play by Jose. Feno is going forward now. Oh no, look at that. Again. A gap in the in the oasis, in the water. Feno, he's got fletching. He can potentially kill those four villagers from flu. Is he gonna notice that? Yes he did. He's sending his archers. He's massing with archers, it's good. Feno is up. Uh, as well as flu, but Feno's got the advantage. In Castle Age, Feno's gonna have more advantage because he's gonna get the extra range on his expos. And he can. So flu will have to. have to play really good. Double stable. Seems like double stable knights from yes from Jose and they've got the plus two armor upgrade and he's going towards flu space for now um, and now they're gonna go forward. Powder sniff, yeah, it was two scouts for two villages, but the, uh, one of the scout was already uh, injured, so I think it's still it was a good trade because you've got to you've got to pick up villages because uh, that's your eco, right? So if you lose one villager, then that means you need to invest fifty food in a new villager, and that new villager will give you some eco. If you lose a scout, and you're losing 80 food, but then it's not it's not hurting your eco because your villagers are still producing, still generating food or food or gold, whatever it is for you. Uh, at the moment, they are trying to force the action on Flu's base. Melko has got five scouts, he's got 
knights as well in 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 flu space and Feno is attacking from the front I think what Jose can do at this point he can add some camels really uh, to fight those knights but camels are prone to archers and Britain archers they've got the extra, extra range that's all is good for them and the archers can produce faster as well that's really good fight for Fiano and Melko this is good looking good for them Flu can potentially lose all these archers Jose is coming up and This could be an interesting fight actually. Oh this is if not looking good for Flu and Fe uh, and Jose. Oh this is really good play by Melko and Feno. This is interesting. Yeah, Jose's score is OP, but it's not really helping the <laughs> situation, actually. Jose is on... Three TCs. He's on 62 villages, but then he's... The only reason I think he's got the highest score is because he hasn't lost that many units. His K2D is alright, and the... Uh, He's got the upgrades as well. Uh. Oh, this is... Ah, no, that was not a good fight for Feno. I don't know why he decided to go for it. He lost a lot of archers there. Now the... Uh... But these knights in Jose's woodline, they can do some damage. Uh, come on, Jose, move, please, move. Make some camels, buddy. Yes, hill again. The hills make they, they play a big massive role in AFC. Yeah, scouts. Yeah, they they do become obsolete in castle age. But then, uh, if you have them alive, I mean, you you gotta just carry on using them. University coming up from uh, Jose. This TC at the back. Mm. That's sort of a save eco. Well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna quickly look at every player and see if anyone's got a siege workshop. Nope, none of them's got a siege workshop. Uh, Jose's knights are chasing Melko. The army count is. Pretty even actually. And Jose and Melko, they are similar in numbers, similar in pop actually. And Melko and Jose Feno and Flu, they are similar in terms of village account. Feno's got five more villages. Uh, you gotta realize, I mean, uh, Britain's got t chief TCs. This fight here. Uh, flu, uh, Jose can lose these. Uh, a lot of knights they can lose. Oh, he managed to save them. He's getting forging. Uh, Melko is getting forging as well. Very neck to neck play here. This this is a very interesting game to be honest with you. Uh, now they are gonna double Jose. And Flu's army is not there. Jose, can he take the fight? Can he kill these archers? Oh, if I think there's a hole between the houses. This is not looking good for Jose. He can lose these knights here. No, no, no. What are you doing, Jose? No, don't go crazy, man. What the hell? Come on. Where is Flu's army? What is he doing with his army? He's raiding Feno in his base. Uh, he needs to go to Jose. No! 
Interesting fight. That was interesting, actually. Uh, Jose is up to infiltrate. So is Melko. I would like to. S I would be interested to see the the unit choices here. Still no camels. I think uh, this would be interesting, actually. Let's have a look at blue. He, yeah, he can go up soon. Uh, Fano, on the other hand, is is nowhere near pure age. Jose's equal is looking really good. Ah, flu is waiting. Fano. Nice. Oh, the range on these expos. Killing these stone miners. Oh, but he can lose these expos. Fena is coming with army. Where is Jose's knights? Where are they? There we go. Imperial Age. So Jose um, is getting cavalry upgrade. He needs to get more, more of the blacksmith upgrades. Melko is raiding Fluna. He's in Flu's base. And Jose is coming with his knight, so it should be alright. Uh, can he snipe some villagers here? That, that's the question. So both players are getting cavaliers, plate barring armor for both. Interesting uh, unit choices. Frank's Paladins, they get the advantage uh, because they get the twin plus 20 more HP. Um, Jose is going forward, he's going to try and take that goal as well. Um, and looks like Flu is building a castle. But Jose is gonna try and raid Feno, but can he get into his base? He cannot. Yeah, Flu's got a castle, he's making mango dies. He's only got one castle though. Um, yeah, the reason I didn't show that fight is because uh, Green was gonna lose those, so there's no point. There was the, uh, the, all the action was going around Jose's base. Again, uh, Marco, I think he's got a lot more army. Yeah, he's got about seven more units than Jose. Oh, that that is not going to be a good fight for Jose. He needs to run from there. Oh, these exports. Jose can lose some cavaliers for free. He lost one. Has Jose stopped making the army? Who's got two castles? So he's getting chemistry upgrade. Uh, you can't get the elite mango die upgrade yet. It's a shame. You've got to have the elite mango die upgrade. And Theno is up to castle age. Sorry, Imperial Age. Unbelievable. A Paladin upgrade for Jose. This is good. I 
I'm gonna have a quick look at the Frank's point. I think it's twenty percent. Yeah, that's twenty percent more HP, not twenty HP. Just wanted to get that right. Uh, so Flu's getting conscription. Yeah, he should be able to afford the Elite Magda upgrade soon. Uh, again, I'm gonna quickly look at the Siege Workshop. Okay, only Jose's got one Siege Workshop, but he's not making any Siege. Uh, at this point of the game, you got to have Siege. You've got to have Siege to, to be able to push, push your opponents. So. Here we go, the, the paladins are coming, the uh, uh, the obelisks are there, this is going to be an interesting fight between Jose, he's running now, he's running, is Flu coming with his army? I don't see Flu's army anyway, okay now he is. Yeah, 12 more HP. Thank you, Wondrous. Oh, this is not looking good for uh, Jose. And look, I mean, Jose, how many castles has he got? Look, he's got three castles. He is making mango dice from there, but. Trainer's got so many obelisks. Oh, this is not looking good. These are this army is idle. They're letting Feno and Melko get the advantage. This is not looking good for them. Yeah, now there we go. Fe Melko decided to send some paladins to Flu's base to, to raid the eco. On the other hand, Jose is going to take this big fight. There's a lot of fighting, a lot of Arbless, and Flu's there with Mango Dice. This could be an interesting fight. This could be a game deciding fight, actually. Flu's got the hill bonus, but so does the Paladins. Oh, the blue Paladins are winning. This is looking good for Jose and Flu. Oh, Jose is now 2v1 now. Uh, this is crazy. This is good. That is a really good fight by Jose. A lot of damage was done to Feno and Melko. Feno's lost all his Arbless. This is really good. Melko uh, continues to try and raid at the flu space, but he's losing his Paladin set. This is that, that was really good. Markets up from uh, Jose, so they're gonna start trading. That is a lot of paladins. This is looking really good for them. I mean, fortified walls coming up for Melko and Feno. So, oh no, this paladin there. Can he see the market there? No, he cannot. If he if he had seen the market there, I think Flu could have sent like a couple of rams in there and then just start raiding it. That could have been interesting. Okay, now they they've decided to go forward. Uh, but Jose needs to bring all his army there, not just a bunch of paladins. I think Flu needs a lot more. A lot more um, Bangu dies. He is producing them constantly, which is good. You can make more stone as well. That is a lot of paladins from Jose. Once again, a strong push coming up with the elite Mangu dies and the paladins. These barracks. This building are actually not helping Flu and Jose, they're actually tanking. 
Malco and Feyenoord, these are blessed, but this is looking really good for Flu and Jose. This could be the game deciding fight, actually. This is looking really good for Flu. Yes, it is not possible to counter these. The Rams are coming from Flu. And in no time, they have just shredded the Paladins. This is the GG call. Really a strong performance by Flu and Jose. Very well played, guys. Really strong performance. I think that was the best game of all. That was really strong performance. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Jose played so strong. Really strong play. I could sense the buyers in favour of Flu and Jose coming through. <laughs> 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 you seem to be enjoying it though. Yeah, I came back and I just thought I'd leave you to it. But yeah, what an uh, interesting set of games. I think a really nice uh, showcase of the settings and the, the potential this tournament has. And um, a surprising result to many, I think. Uh, they were closely seeded and we expected some good games, but 3 1 to Flu and Jose is it's definitely probably uh, one of the least probable results if you looked at it as just a neutral going into the tournament the matches i think yeah um uh, really i mean strong play that, by them. that 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 performance from uh jose that was really strong and that's the reason i said in the end that i think that was the best game of all all the four because they played so well he took a couple of really strong fights and then uh, flew he did really good job i mean he he did the early push he, he was unexpected with the man at arms early on i mean with the 9 30 up time you would expect scouts coming to your base but with man at arms and then that was really good melko played really strong again he played a really strong game but uh, it's just a shame they lost it's a really good game i was hoping we'd go for another like 10 minutes or so But again, I mean, fully upgraded Mango dies. They are so hard to counter. And Persian Paladins, they are, they get the bonus against the Archers. It's just so hard to counter. That combination is so strong. Yeah, Melkor and Fino shows us a combination which is very, very strong in the Castle Age. Yeah. Um, amongst the best crossbowmen and knights combination you can think of. But they needed to keep that from going more than five minutes into the Imperial Age because you just saw the game just instantly go in the direction of Flu and Jose as soon as the Elite Menankidae and Paladin combination came out. As yeah, definitely. Chat, it's just so difficult to deal with. Uh, yeah. Verging on impossible if you haven't got the same tools at your disposal. Exactly. And I think the the, the bit was... Uh, the, the, the thing they missed was no siege. I mean, there was a point where they, they won a fight against Flu and they did 2v1 against Flu. There was a good fight to be won by Feyenoord and Malcolm, but then there was no siege workshop to keep that push on and on the other hand uh, Jose's eco was untouched completely so he he I mean he just kept on booming uh, what Melko could have done differently I guess he could have put like extra two stables gone full on castle edge knights with some mangonels and rams and then just just push from there and you know put more pressure on Jose but I mean, not taking anything away from Blue and Jose, they played a really play well, a really strong game, and so did Melko and Feno. It's just just an interesting result, to be honest. Something nobody was expecting. Yeah, let's take a little look at the brackets then to see how that impacts on the next games. Um, uh, so... Blue and Jose will play Riot and Doubt and Goku, which Ooh. is a step up. <laughs> but um, they played very well there and they can give a good account of themselves but obviously Ria and Doubt may be a bridge too far uh, for them whereas Melkor and Finor will drop down to the loser bracket now so they only get one more chance to lose a game and they will play uh, 
Poxo's team. Oh no, wait, hang on. This is, all, uh... this is all assuming that Riot's team beats Poxo's team, but I think most people would consider that. Uh, Where are you watching? I can't see that. I'm looking at the brackets like that I linked to you. Like, Where you, did you, you link it? It's challenge.com slash MOA2v2. Okay, let me, okay. let me link you in the team speak as well. Oh, sorry, I put a full stop at the end of that oh, unintentionally. But yeah, Flu and Pose and potentially Mio will go on to face Riot and Doubt in all likelihood. And Melkor and Fenor will play Poxo's team uh, after they have... presumably come up short against Riot and Doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Riot, Doubt, and Goku, yeah. Well, I mean, they've played really strong, really strongly so far, and would be would be cool if they can get a game or two from Doubt and Riot. I don't see that happening, but still, <laughs> if 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 they can get one game out of them, that would be cool. Yeah, the original brackets had uh, potentially Riot and Doubt facing Metal RTS and Stefan, which would have been hilarious. Klapskis was getting really excited <laughs> about that, but it didn't happen. The, the brackets shifted and they didn't qualify anyway. Mm. So who, yeah, um, who is Melko and Feno going to play next? They'll they'll play the uh, Riot's opponents. Okay. So if Poxo's team, that that's like a seventeen fifty to eighteen hundred ish team. So we're looking um, at potentially Riot and Doubt playing Slam and Back T in the round in three. the upper bracket. Yeah. yeah. If, if well. It would if take until back. round four of the winner bracket for those to meet. But yeah, if everything goes according to seeding, then, then Riot and Doubt versus Bact and Slam is the matchup that's penciled in if every single thing goes yeah. according to the seeding. But obviously, uh, potential for upsets. I mean, Riot and Doubt have got to beat Zuppy and the Max, which isn't easy by any means. And Bact and Slam have got to beat Tato, sorry, not Tato, Tim and Vivi. Vivi, yeah. Uh, Again, a strong uh, game. Yeah, really, really difficult for them to do. Difficult match to win, although obviously perfectly possible. Uh, they are seeded just slightly above those yeah. teams. But yeah, lots to look forward to in Massive Arabia 2v2. I want to say thank you for the stream, Mongo, as uh, you did really, really well today for your first stream. We didn't have to spend too long dwelling on technical issues. And uh, I hope to see you cast a bit more if, you, yeah. if you're up for it, if you enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm for it. And. I really enjoyed it. Uh, apologies to the viewers that I was not able to focus on the fight uh, at points. But I think I got good support from you guys. So thank you very much, everyone. And I'm going to stop streaming here. I'll be back yeah. live on my channel later on. <laughs> thank right you. Right before you end yeah. it, if you haven't already, uh, I just want to remind everyone that in... Just under three hours, we've got AOC Champions League kicking off on this channel right here. I'm going to cast that later, Viper versus Winchester. So do come back for that later if you're interested. Uh, and you might now end the stream, Mongo, if you wish. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. if I'm, I'm around, I, I definitely would love to join you. I'll give you a shout. Okay, thank you uh, once again, everyone. See you guys later.